I am Narendra. In the last video we have discussed about the formation of energy bands in solid crystals like semiconductors using chronic penny model. In this video we will try to learn more about the energy bands in semiconductors. The chronic penny model mainly concluded that the energy eigenvalues varies periodically in k space. The concept of Brillian zone also discussed in the previous video. This is the first Brillian zone. These are the allowed bands and there is a forbidden energy band between these allowed energy bands. So here I am showing one image that is the first Brillian zone of FCC lattice. FCC lattice. You know, this is a simple cubic structure. The atoms are at the corners of this cubic structure. So, if the atoms are at each face of this cubic structure, that is the FCC lattice, face space centered cubic lattice. So, if you take a origin at the body centered position and then you bisect to nearest atoms, that will give you the first brilliant zone of this face centered cubic lattice. So, this is the first brilliant zone of this face centered cubic lattice. So, this is along kx, ky, and kz direction, right? So, you know, the origin is denoted by this comma point and there are several other points like L point, X point and K point or at different directions. So the energy band is mainly combination of the structure along all these directions. So these are the energy band structures of some of the semiconductors silicon and gallium arsenide. So if you see carefully the energy band structure of silicon, the energy as a function of K, right? It along different points. So you see carefully the maximum of the conduction band at gamma point. You look at the gamma point, the maximum of the conduction band. So this is a valency band. So this is a valency band and there is a minimum of the conduction band so that is it near to the X so this is the minimum of the conduction band so these are not lies at the same K value so these are at different K values so the energy band gap is nearly 1.15 electron volt for this silicon so this is the energy band gap so if you see the valency band occur at gamma point but the conduction band the minimum of the conduction band is occur at different k value so the direct electron transition is not possible in these structures so this type of structures called the indirect band gap semiconductors indirect band gap semiconductors so there is no direct electron transition processes not possible in these structures that are called the indirect band gap semiconductors so the semiconductors like silicon germanium gallium phosphide aluminum arsenide are called the indirect band gap semiconductors if you look at the gallium arsenide band structure so the maximum of the valency band and the minimum of the conduction band lies at the same k value at gamma point so this is the band gap it is nearly about 1.43 electron volt 1.43 electron volt for this gallium arsenide so here the minimum of the conduction band and maximum of the valency band so this is the valency band and this is the conduction band lies at the same point or same k value 
so there is a direct transition can be possible in this band structures so that are called the direct band gap semiconductors direct band gap semiconductors so the semiconductors like gallium arsenide gallium nitride cadmium sulfide zinc sulfide zinc oxide cadmium selenide these are all the direct band gap semiconductors so here one thing we need to see if uh, the electron in this indirect band gap semiconductors excited to conduction band suppose there there is a electron excitation by absorbing the light so there is a light which is absorbed by this semiconductor indirect band gap semiconductor the electron transferred to the conduction band and this excited electron is de-excited to conduction band that will emit some kind of energy but this energy is not equal to that energy absorbed by this indirect band gap semiconductor that means there is no energy conservation in this indirect indirect band gap semiconductors as well as there is also momentum change in this indirect band gap semiconductor that means the energy and momentum are not conserved so how this energy and momentum are conserved in this indirect band gap semiconductors so these are mainly via phonon if the excited electron gives some of the energy to the phonon 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 is the vibration of lattices this is the lattice so the vibration of lattice emit the phonon so the the excited electron gives some of the energy to the lattice and that emit the phonon and some of the other energy is released so this emitted phonon can create some kind of a heat in the crystal heat in the crystal so in this way the energy and momentum the energy and momentum are conserved via phonon contribution but in case of direct band gap semiconductors the energy and momentum are conserved when the electron is excited when it absorbs the light so that will give the same energy is equal to the band gap of that semiconductor that means the energy and momentum are conserved so this process occur at same k value that so the, in this way the energy and momentum are conserved in this direct band gap semiconductors so in recent time the researchers are trying to introduce strain into this indirect band gap semiconductors in a such a way that the band structure can make some a direct band gap structure so the band structure that can come down and that can make a minimum of this conduction band and that can make direct transition with the valency band at a same k value so that will give you some kind of a energy and momentum conservation so this type of uh, materials are trying to utilize for the photonic devices you know this direct band gap semiconductor can be well utilized for the photonic devices like leds light emitting diodes and laser diodes so this can easily emit the light but indirect band gap semiconductor do not emit any light so that will give some kind of heat in the crystal via phonon emission but by introducing the strain into the structure one can make a photonic devices using this indirect band gap semiconductors so in this way the direct and indirect band gap semiconductor can be understood i hope uh, you understand a little bit about this uh, band structures indirect and direct band gap structures in this uh, semiconductors so next time we will see with the other discussion on this semiconductor topic To see more videos like this and please consider subscribing.